Good morning to you, or afternoon, Mr. Walker, bringing the new deal, dropping the knowledge on you today, all right? Today we're going to take a look at Franklin D. Roosevelt, our president after, during the Great Depression. He's going to come after Hoover, okay? Um, before we get there, though, let's go back, all right? Part of today is comparing Hoover to Roosevelt and uh, uh, looking at the New Deal program. So what has Hoover done, Okay. Remind you, what has Hoover done? Well, when times got tough, he said the economy was sound and that it was going to come back, okay? He also told families they should not depend on the federal government for help, they should take care of themselves. Then he got in a meeting with uh, bankers and business leaders and union people, uh, corporations, and they kind of came up with the idea that uh, local charities and fundraising can help out the people. Okay, um, and then he took a really unpopular action. Remember the bonus army, World War I vets who were supposed to get money for their service in 1945, asked for it in 1932. Congress both passed laws to make the government pay this uh, money early in 1932. Instead, uh, Hoover vetoes it, remember? He vetoes it and says, no, the bonus army can't have their money, guaranteed by the government early. Uh, and then the people stuck around, and then he tear gassed them and sent the military in to get them out of Washington, D.C. Um, so that drops public opinion quite a bit. Okay, and in fact, he's running against uh, FDR in the 1932 election, and he gets smoked. All right, this is a landslide victory. Um, FDR wins all but one, two, three, four, five, six states. Okay. Um, and it's, it's by the Electoral College. A lot of freshmen don't know this, but the most votes in one state, for example, were in Wisconsin. So uh, FDR got the most states in Wisconsin, so he gets the 12 electoral votes. That number is dependent on the how many House of Representatives you have and the two senators. Um, and so uh, when people win a state, get the most, they get the votes in a state, and they get those electoral votes. So it was 472 electoral votes to 59. Um, and the magic number to win is 270, so be looking for that in a couple of weeks. All right, um, let's meet our going to be new president. He was the governor of New York, all right? Um, he's going to win the presidency. The Democrats, so he's a Democrat. The Democrats are going to win the Senate and the House. They're going to work together. The New Deal focused on three R's, recovery, reform, and relief. Recovery, get it back on the feet. Get the jobs going, build more jobs. Reform, change things so it doesn't go back to the way it was. And relief, giving aid and money, uh, or giving money and food to the people that need it. Direct relief, we're giving it directly to you to use right away. He launches what is comparable to the most important 100, first 100 days of a president. Every president after FDR will be assessed on their first 100 days as president, okay? Um, he comes in and he passes over 15 major New Deal laws to help the economy and help the American people. All right, one of the first things he does is he shuts down all the banks. He makes them go on a bank holiday. And then he establishes the EBRA, okay, the Emergency Banking Relief Act. What this was to do was to help people who put their money in the bank, okay? Um, this, so he sends in the Treasury Department to inspect banks. What they're doing is building the co public confidence back in the banks by looking at and making sure that they're not loaning out easy money or a lot of loans or m loaning money to be invested in the stock market or investing in the stock market themselves, okay? Uh, this is very, very successful. The people um, do get confidence and they start putting money back in the bank. So the bank was reformed. It was changed the way banking could happen to make sure that people's money was there. Another thing he did was uh, fireside chats. He would go on the radio and talk to the American people about all of the different programs he was going to use. Okay, so it was kind of like he was booming into everyone's living room through their radio. All right. Um, one of the other he does the Glass-Steagall Act, which establishes the FDIC. Okay, the FDIC, um, Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. What this did was to, it was to protect people who put money in the bank again. Um, what it did was it insured individual bank accounts up to um, $5,000. Okay, back then it insured your bank account up to $5,000. So if you had $10,000 in the bank and the bank ran out of money, um, you would at least get $5,000 of your money back, okay? And 
Uh, today it's up to, I believe, 450000 So if you had a million in the bank and the bank ran out of money, the government would still make sure you get $450,000 of that. Okay. Um, and so that's the FDIC. Uh, it is very, very successful. It is actually still around today. Do not put your money in a bank or a credit union that does not have an FDIC sticker in the window on the door that they're insured by this. Um, all right, so that they make sure that your money's there. The other thing he does is the 21st Amendment. Um, he repeals prohibition and brings back jobs that way through alcohol. Remember, the 18th Amendment got rid of alcohol. 21st Amendment allows uh, alcohol to be sold, manufactured, transported, uh, bars and restaurants like that. So uh, a lot of great work there, adding a lot of jobs, okay? Um, the CCC, this is the Civilian Conservation Corps. What this was is a program for uh, young unmarried men between the ages of 18 and 25. They sent you out to a quasi-military kind of program where you worked on nature conservation. So this is putting young men to work, but it's also conserving the nature because we kind of learned from the Dust Bowl we need to conserve uh, nature and build up parks and make parks really nice, okay? Um, the PWA, the Public Works Administration, that was actually something that took place here in Beloit. What that was is it gave, they gave money to states to create jobs. The PWA, in fact, uh, built some of the downtown buildings, and they also uh, built up and made uh, the parts of Big Hills, okay? Um, the trail that leads to the top of Big Hills, that stone wall was all made by uh, people back in the Depression during uh, with the PWA. Some of those uh, stone chimneys or fireplaces out there at Big Hills, they say 1937 on them. They were built by the PWA. So these were kind of like uh, mostly construction type jobs um, to help young unemployed men get uh, work. OK, and the CWA was kind of the same thing, building rural schools, paying teachers. OK. Um, so here's the FDIC sticker. If you don't see that in the window, don't put your money there. This is the CCC. So it put uh, young men 18 to 25 they received 30 dollars a month in which they sent to their families um, they were clothed and fed by the government and they would work outside you see them here with woodchucks um, and then they're in the classroom learning and so they kind of would go out and do these things all right there's some of these structures at big hills that look like this so um, that is the pwa the new deal right here in beloit okay planting trees clearing out forest all right PWA built the Golden Great Bridge and other major projects, so just mostly putting men to work in construction. CWA, the same thing. All right, digging ditches, moving dirt. All right, see how many men this is. They probably don't need to hire that many men, but there's so many men who need a job that this is good, honest work. Okay. Uh, HOLC, or the Homeowners Loan Corporation, what this did was gave loans to prevent foreclosures. So it redid your loan so it could make it a little cheaper, bring the interest rate down so that people could afford their homes. And this is a good thing um, to make sure that, the, it, so it was for homeowners. And what it was to prevent them, it kind of redid their loan so it was a lower payment, lower interest rate, so that people could afford to keep their homes and make their monthly payment so that they wouldn't foreclose. Because if the housing industry goes down, then your neighborhood start to fall apart if these houses don't get you know, sold and kept well, okay? Uh, so the Homeowners Loan Corporation, um, it did later end um, at the end of the 1930s, but it was great because it helped out, uh, I believe around five million Ah, here it is. So it ended in 1936. All right, so it made a mistake. It ended in 1936. It kept it allowed 20% of homeowners that were about to lose their house from losing it. So you know it helped out people who were about to lose their house. 20% actually got to keep their house. Um, so it ends in 1936. Okay, the FHA Federal Housing Administration they gave loans and mortgages to repair houses so that the houses stayed nice and neighborhoods and uh, properties kept their value. FERA is one that you need to know, the FERA, Federal Emergency Relief Administration. This was giving direct relief to the needy. So this was to any, uh, any unemployed people or people who needed food or money to pay their bills. Okay, they call this going on the relief lines back then. And uh, so this is just direct money, uh, food money to the people. Okay, this is going to benefit thousands, or actually millions, I don't know why thousands, millions and millions of people. 
um, to help them keep the lights on, to help them keep the gas on, the heat on, um, you know, make sure that they have money for food or food in general, okay? Uh, so this is kind of like your food stamp equivalent of today. All right, so FIRA also, you know, kind of made an un unemployed women's uh, camp, okay, uh, where they would do little work um, and get some money and send it home. All right, furthering the New Deal, later on he gets reelected in 1936, right? In 1936 would be the first time most African Americans vote for a Democrat, okay, before it used to be the Republicans. And this is the first time labor unions are going to support a presidential uh, nominee. Um, and so he wins even more this time and only doesn't win two states, okay? Social Security, the SSA, all right, this was created in 1935. What this is, is it's insurance for retirees 65 or older. Uh, it's unemployment compensation. So if you lose your job because the business goes out of business, um, you're going to get a little bit of money. Or if you get laid off, you're going to get a little bit of money, okay, to keep you afloat until you can find another job. It also gives aid to disabilities and families with children. Um, so if you have a disability and you can't work, like clearly you're going to end up not making any money and starving. Um, so they give you money enough to live off of the assistance. Um, or if, say, for example, you have a child that is disabled and you have to be a 100% caregiver. So they would send, uh, Social Security would send money for that child, to, you know, money for the parent to be able to take care of that child. So it's, in, so it's money for people who retire at 65 or older. It's unemployment insurance, and then it's uh, money for disabled people. All right. Um, WPA again, or I don't know if we did this one. No, we did the PWA, the WPA Work Progress Administration. They built airports, roads, public buildings. All right. Women sewed clothes for the needy. Um, professional writers, artists, and performers put on plays. All right. So here's some of the construction jobs going on. Um, and then they built dolls for children. They put on plays, okay? Um, women sewed. Just, you know, this stuff, making dolls, is to take people's minds off of the terrible situation. The plays was done to uh, um, take people's minds off the terrible situation, too. Kind of more of a distraction. But also, like, this put people to work and gave people money, all right? This is all funded by the government, by the way, okay? Um, Fair Labor Standard Act down here, the FLSA, all right, what this did was set a maximum work week at 40 hours. Anything over 40 hours, you get paid in overtime, and overtime is at least one and a half the amount of your hourly wage, okay? Um, so this kind of limited how much workers could work before you had to pay them more. It also established a minimum wage so that uh, people couldn't pay you very, very low wages. They had to pay you a certain wage. For example, today... Uh, federal minimum wage is at $7.25, okay? So no one can pay you underneath that. Um, what this is to do, this is supposed to help an everyday worker. Um, in fact, this is still around today, okay? The 40-hour work week, if you have an hourly job that pays you by the hour, that is, uh, they, you can only, you are only to work 40 hours before they have to pay you overtime and there's minimum wage today, okay? So it's still around today. Um, I'm trying to think if there's others. Uh, so for, as far as the New Deal goes, um, you know, it did a lot to bring the economy back a little bit. It did cut down, um, if I go all the way up, it did cut down on unemployment, okay? So he comes in the office, 1932. 1933, his first year in office, we have the highest unemployment at 25%, but he starts working with the New Deal. By 1937, he split it about almost just in half, you know, took it from 25% down to 14%. And then it kind of comes back and then it kind of ends, all right? So it didn't, you know, bring us out of the Great Depression. People, there was still very, very high unemployment. People were still looking for jobs. Um, people were still struggling, but it did alleviate some of the problems. Um, one thing it does, though, is it's called deficit spending. It's where you spend more than you're making, okay? But he has to fund these new deals to put people to work to create jobs, okay? Conservatives, people on the other side of him, they think he stifled free enterprise, like by creating construction programs. He took money out of construction uh, companies' money is kind of what they said. Individual initiative, meaning 
Um, people aren't going to go and try and create a job or create something new if the government's just going to give them a job. Liberals, on the other hand, who do support him for the, uh, you know, are the closer ones who support him, they think he didn't do enough to socialize the economy or end the inequalities of 